equivalent. I'll have you think about that, but the set of all such classes will be called Q, which is basically the set of all such equivalence classes of pairs, of um, these ordered pairs. Right? What ordered pairs? The ordered pairs in Z cross Z. Okay. We might have to be a little careful here. Maybe Z cross Z minus zero. The set containing zero. Period. Okay. Okay, everybody with me? What, what have we just done? We, I, I've just defined what I mean by Q, right? It's an ordered pair, and uh, it's equivalence classes of ordered pairs. Now, what we haven't said yet is what the equivalence relation is. So, what is the equivalence relation? By the way, b before we even talk about the, what the equivalence relation is, what's, what's another thing you might want to be true about Q, aside from the fact that, you know, I've just said that there's a set here, but somehow, how is it related to the set I began with? I might want to delineate that, right? I might want to tell you, how is it that Q is related to Z? And usually, I mean, the way you think about Q is that it somehow extends Z, right? You have a bunch of points. These are whole numbers on the number line that you grew up thinking about. And now we've filled them in with a bunch of other points in between. Right? But are the points on the number line still there? Yes, they're embedded uh, in Q, right? So you might want to say how Z is embedded in Q. Okay. So we want uh, these pairs to extend Z so that, okay, which classes will correspond to Z, to the, to the elements of the natural numbers? What will I, if I give me the number five, what class would you hope that it's somehow associated with? Yeah, how about five over one? So that, for instance, n over one in Q corresponds to n in Z. Right, so this is the other thing we might hope for in our construction. Okay. Okay. Now, if you've taken an algebra course, then uh, you, what we're looking for is an isomorphism of, uh, of uh, Z into Q. But if you don't know those words yet, that's okay. Okay, so tell me what the equivalence relation should be. So after grade school or after enough examples, we see that what? Q is the set of all, let's say, M over N. Here's a, here's a these are equivalents, no, uh, uh, classes, such that M, N are in Z. N is not zero, uh, where um, M over N is an equivalence class. of uh, is the equivalence class of M comma N with the relation, what relation? Okay, tell me when P, two things, two ordered pairs are equivalent. When will P comma Q be equivalent to M comma N? Steve? When P times N. Good, this is otherwise known as the well, there's some name. Um, cross, you cross multiply to check whether fractions are the same. Yes, that's the equivalence relation. So with this relation, these are equivalent if, if what conditions are true. Steve suggested doing what? Let's take P times N and check whether it's the same as what? Q times M. And what else? 
let's just demand that n and q not be zero. Okay. So if these things are true, then we'll say these two uh, these two pairs uh, are uh, equivalent. Okay. Okay. Now that's a relation. Is it an equivalence relation? There's some things to check here, right? We won't do them all, but uh, I do want you to think then that. So here's the important thing to do. Once you have the construction, the work is not done. You should check that it's an equivalence relation. Check tilde is an equivalence relation. So for instance, is it reflexive? Some of you said yes right away, and some of you hesitated. How would I check if it's reflexive? What would I have to check to check the reflexive condition for this relation, which is on pairs of pairs, right? You give me a pair and another pair. How would I check? What would I have to check for reflexivity? What do I want to check? What's the condition I want to check? What's the, what corresponds to ARA over there? Yeah, is PQ equivalent to PQ? Now, does everybody agree this is what we have to check? That's not the only thing, but it's one of the things, yeah? Okay, good. Now, is this easy to check? Well, then you go back to this definition. This is why definitions are so important in mathematics, because we know what we mean when we have a definition. What does it mean to check PQ tilde PQ? It means checking that... PQ equals QP. Is that true for integers? Yes. Okay, good. So I'm not going to write it out, but you can write this out. Okay? I'm going to put dot, dot, dot there, which means you finish the argument. Okay? Um, the other thing, of course, to check is Q and Q are not zero. Are they not zero? Well, by the, the, the ordered pair, but the, the, uh, the, the set we defined, it's not. So we don't have to worry. Okay, great. Uh, what's the second thing you might check? Symmetry. Okay, is Q, is P comma, okay, what does that mean? If PQ tilde MN, does that imply MN tilde PQ? First of all, do you agree this is what we have to show? Good. Secondly, do you, can, can you see how, the, the, how you'd write this out, which I won't bore you with? Yeah. This condition yeah. means 